let's see here. Put my old 32 tooth Montgomery Ward ratchet to work. There we go. It's actually a, a Duro made ratchet from the 30s or 40s. It's just branded for Montgomery Ward. But it's still earning its keep. There we go. Look at that. Excellent. I think NIU just uh, scored. Yep, look at that. Some of these bolts are coming out really easy, which I, I take as a good sign. I'll say that. All right, I undid all the bolts, pounded it with a mallet. Okay, this thing is lighter than I thought it would be. Yep, definitely see open runners. Look at the intake ports on this engine. They're enormous. That's what I was talking about. The first observation I'm gonna make is that I think somebody has tried to get this engine running before. This one cylinder appears to be pooled up with oil. Either ATF or like Marvel Mystery Oil. But it's sealed, so I guess that's good. Alright, so I just filled all the intake ports and the cylinders with Marvel Mystery Oil. We're gonna go let that sit for a little bit. And then maybe we'll try to put a uh, breaker bar on the crank, see if we can't get it to turn. I doubt it, but who knows? Figure while we're waiting for that, we'll take a look inside the valley pan. You can see it was so rusted. It's got multiple holes in it, so I really don't care about it because we're gonna have to get a new one anyway. It's not like I'm destroying a good part, but uh, it's... Not that bad, I did, it's hard to see on camera, I did vacuum it out, it was full of just crap, like, I mean, like, some dirt or silt-like substance that was, like, not rusty, but it was, like, oily and crap, so I cleaned a bunch of that out of there. I'm gonna go just dump a bunch of Marvel Mystery Oil in here, and then, uh, again, We'll let that sit and we'll revisit it a little later. Update, we poured in a little bit more Marvel Mystery Oil and we're gonna continue to let it sit. Uh, just a quick tip I wanna give you. You know what's sexy? Keeping track of all your bolts. Always do this. Punch holes in cardboard, put them in. You see labeled front and rear. Don't know how well you could read that, but like valve cover driver, valve cover passenger side, water neck, valley pan. I have to put the bolts in here, but you get the idea. So definitely always make sure to keep track of your bolts. Week two, this is the current situation. But at least we have an engine stand. Get it mounted. That bolt's a little wonky. Whoops, I didn't do it. 
We're fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Get her out. Let's get the valve covers off. Get all that taken care of. Did I mention this engine weighs about 750 pounds? You don't say. Yeah. That is a little sketchy, but it works. You bet your ass it does. All right. Mm. Oh, boy. That's going to be interesting. Your uh, spark plug wire holders are pretty much fused together. I figured they would be. Yeah, your couplers are fused. We're probably going to need new wires anyway. I'm pretty sure these are the originals. Yeah. You're going to want... you happen to have, like, a pair of pliers I can borrow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you want to use it? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll borrow that for a minute. Yep. Pop those out and we'll see what else we could take off. I tell you, that distributor is toast. Oh, you bet your ass it is. <laughs> Cannot believe this bolt is coming out of this. This engine's like voodoo magic. Look at how horrible it is, but all the bolts are coming out like nice and easy. You wanted this engine to be a night. Uh, you thought this engine was going to be the nightmare. However, the nightmare is being merciful. I thought this engine was going to be a dream. It turned out to be a nightmare, yeah. but <laughs> now it's like a mix of the two. It's like one of those nightmares you enjoy where you're like going to defeat the uh, bad guy. The masochistic kind of nightmare. Yeah, that. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> this is a Tim Burton work for four. <laughs> Man, we have some sick and twisted minds, don't we? Yep. Then again, I've heard a lot worse at the I'm shops I work back, at. Yeah. Fuel pump bolt. Fuel pump bolt. Trying to make clearance in the front and lighten the load on the engine stand. It's got a spacer on it. Mm. No, 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 actually, it that's a gasket. There you go. Pretty cool. You. That bolt's stuck in there. There, you go. there we go. Uh, These are aluminum. Is it? That came off with the bolt. I would have took off a piece of that flange. Maybe. Look at all the corrosion, dude. That has to get wire wheel. So this was the fuel hose. Yeah, yeah that was the incoming fuel hose, yeah. I believe. That's the outgoing. Mm -hmm. So that just goes straight back to the carburetor. So this is going to have to stay on the block. That, I think, is a permanent part of the block. Okay. Well, let's keep going on the... We, now with that pump out of the way to an extent... Well, we could get at it from the front if we want to try getting at it from this angle. Yeah, since that's... The distributor. For get all this shit. Let's get all this stuff off the top end of the engine. Mm-hmm. Poured some more Marvel Mystery Oil in there. And we're just undoing the rocker assembly to try to free this thing up. Plus, these rockers need to be soaked. And or replaced. They're actually not as bad. Like, they cleaned up pretty well. All the rust just came right off of them. It was like dust. Like, they just got, like, spritzed with water a little bit. Go ahead and nail that side with uh, for those four bolts. They came out easy. They break loose easy. You're not on all the way. Maybe you should put the camera down. Probably. You me <laughs> yeah. Be the cameraman today. Oh yeah, these are coming off pretty easily. 
rocket lever shaft might come out for you. Oh, now. I think that valve was open. Easiest bolts of all. Yeah. The hard ones would probably be for the head themselves. Jeez, yeah. Especially outdoor ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, look at that. Alright. Cool. You can probably stop it now. Rocket lever for the left side head. Oh, look at that. Where would you like this set, sir? I don't know, just on the ground for now. I mean, you kind of want to set this on something where we'll fucking screw it up. Uh, here. Go ahead and examine this if you have uh, all that. Yeah, yeah. Because the rear rocker levers are nice and free. The, I'm not sure about where the rest would be free. Yeah. Oh. We got that on. Huh? There's your push rods. Oh, mine's coming out too. Your push rods in the back are nice oh, and free. That was, yeah, these are free. Those are seized. So I tell you what we're gonna do with these. I'm gonna take these over here and uh, do a little thing with ATF with them. All right, let's see if I can stop now. That is coming off. Moment of truth. Go. Off it comes. Got it. Got it. Oh, <clears throat> Marvel mystery. Look at how clean those are, dude. Funny enough, yeah. What? Okay. Look at how clean those are. You, That's amazing. You are one lucky dude on this side. Oh yeah, we got lucky. That's all marble mystery oil, by the way. That's uh, that's not bad, but we got lucky on this. We got lucky. Charles probably gonna be pissed that we got this time while he was out. <laughs> Second right. cylinder heads off. The verdict? Actually, not a disaster. That's marble mystery oil in these cylinders, by the way. On this side, not a disaster. This piston's got a lot of aluminum oxide on it. We should probably scrape that. But the cylinder walls do have a little bit of a uh, ridge on them. But I wonder if we just hit this with a hone, those would probably be fine. If you have them big enough. Yeah, I think this has a 4.3 inch or a 4.6 inch. I think it's a 4.3 inch bore. Yeah. <laughs> Love to pull up my pants, but I don't have the clean hands. It's a little bit of an issue. Yeah. 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 Uh, -huh. uh any rags anywhere? Paper towel, uh, nothing? I can get a paper towel. That'd be awesome. Then maybe we'll put a breaker bar on this, give these a little bit of marble mist oil and oil. Ah, let's see if we can get them to turn. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's just a mess. Oh. Now with both of the cylinder heads off, you can see what I was talking about earlier with the combustion chamber in block. This one's almost at top dead center, and you can see how the deck is at an angle to the piston like that. And you can see the marks in the other cylinders. Now one of the things we did find is we found some uh, built up rust in this one, which, might require a trip to the machine shop. I mean, regardless, we're probably going to have to clean this up with at minimum a hone. I'm trying to remain optimistic here, but, you know, sometimes you might have to think realistically, I guess. That's just what I'm saying. So after further analysis, it looks like we might have found our two problem cylinders. This one, just because it's got that white stuff, and I think it had a lot more on it before I sprayed it with some uh, PB Blaster. And I was told that's 
aluminum oxide when it comes into contact with steel, galvanically corrodes, and that stuff is, quote, as hard as concrete. So we're going to see. And then this one over here has that rust buildup in there that I'm going to have to try to break loose in that. So those appear to be our two problem cylinders as of right now. All right now, out of sheer curiosity after working on it yesterday, let's see if we can't get this thing to move. Yep, that's stuck. All right, well, looks like we got some more work to do. Here we are a week later, and uh, I've been a uh, taken a hitting device and a board and been pounding on the pistons to see if I can get them to move, sprayed some uh, PB blaster in them, and all those have drained out slowly, except for the front two. And uh, this one still has a little bit in it, but I believe it might be the front two cylinders that are actually seized. At least that's the theory I'm working on now. But we might have to drop the pan and take a look. I call this the ADD method of uh, engine repair, where we just try a bunch of different things all out of order in that. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to try to do that I've heard you can do to get some of the surface rust out of the cylinders, that one might be a little pitted, we're going to have to take a look at that one, is take a scrubber pad and go take it to the rust. Dip in a little bit of marble mystery oil. Holy cow. That carbon just coming off of it. Uh, to quote Pokemon games, it's super effective. Okay, that looks like a viable method. Well, that did something. Those are looking... Pretty good, I think. We might have even got the oxidation off of this one. I have a really interesting uh, lip on some of these. You can kind of see it on this one. I have a really tiny lip right there that's barely feelable with your finger, so I think that's good. But then I have kind of, you can see it really badly right here. I have a reverse lip where the cylinder is probably like five thousandths smaller than the combustion chamber area. It's like a reverse lip. Inverted lip. I don't know what to call it. I guess that's fine because I have no idea why that would be there if that wasn't factory. Any Mal experts are free to chime in with that. But uh, this one We've cleaned this cylinder up massively, but I still think this rust buildup is going to be a problem. Other ones, again, they clean up nicely. This one, this side was a little harder to get to. Especially back there, it was a little harder to get to, but yeah. Actually, cleaning up quite nicely. We might just have to take a hone to most of these to redo the cross hatching. This one, we might still end up taking this to a machine shop, but only time will tell, so we're going to keep at it. Alright, couple of weeks later, 
and I've decided to address what might also be a seized camshaft. I'm just, well, obviously we need that to turn. We need to get those lifters out. And also, I'm just trying to eliminate variables for why the engine is seized. This camshaft probably isn't helping, so I'm going to try to eliminate that. So one of the things I'm doing is taking off the timing cover. I, I love these engines. Everything is a half inch. Like, seriously, like, almost every bolt is a half inch. So I'm going to take uh, all these bolts here. No, no, those don't have to, those don't have to go off. But... I'm going to take the timing cover off and I'm going to expose the timing chain and gear. Now, I'll get some light on this when I, when I do, but timing gear is basically going to have to be replaced anyway. A lot of engines from this era started using uh, nylon teeth on the gears just to reduce noise. And after, uh, after a couple of decades or even as few as a few years, the teeth would occasionally start to break off, and then, you know, they'd go down to the oil pan, clog up the pickup. So, definitely going to have to be inspected, and it's probably going to be replaced just for peace of mind. Now, you can buy metal timing gears and that on the internet, so I'm going to look into getting those. But for now, I'm just going to try to get this cover off, and then we'll get a light on this and see what we're dealing with. See if we can get that camshaft out, because I think that will help immensely. All right, so apparently you can't take that timing cover off without also dropping the oil pan, which, I mean, I needed to do that anyway to, uh, take a look at the bearings and also the gasket on that's going to have to be replaced so I might as well do that I figure so that's what I'm doing right now update pans off that was just a bunch of half inch bolts and uh lo and behold we believe this engine has been worked on before because those are steel teeth those are not nylon and you can see all that residue from the lead and everything, but those are steel teeth. So that's very good. It does not have the nylon teeth. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to undo these bolts and see if we can't get this camshaft out really quick. So in order to get the camshaft out, we have to... Uh, had to flip the engine over because most of the lifters were rusted in place. Now, I, you wouldn't be able to see it on camera, and I don't think you can see it down here, but if you look through some of the oil drain holes on the top, the bottom half of the lifters were still shiny. So it looked like only the tops were rusted, meaning we'll probably just be able to knock them out from the bottom and then we'll be able to take the camshaft out. Though I'm now realizing we might have to take out the lower rotating assembly in order to get to that. Oh well. Anyway, further reinforcing my belief that someone's messed with this engine before or it's been apart is it has an AC Delco, or AC, I assume that's AC Delco, uh, oil pump. And I also noticed, where is it? You can see the three on there. The rod caps are numbered. There's a two. So, I'm pretty sure someone has been in here before. So I guess we're going to have to go ahead, start taking this out, start knocking those lifters out. But we have to take the pistons out anyway, because we probably have to re-ring them. And the event in the event cylinder number one has to go to the machine shop. Well, we can't deliver them an engine with a rotating assembly in it. So here goes.
All right, so we're gonna start getting this oil pump off here. Bolts are a 9 16 and I began twisting this uh, tube that goes here. So I'm gonna wait to get these off and then I'm just gonna have to grab this and rotate it with that, I think, to try to get that off. Because I don't wanna break that tube because I don't know where you would ever find that. And that's a little bit of a problem. This is also a problem when I can't get my uh, wrench off the uh, bolt. That might have to be an adjustable wrench. Well, at least it's broken loose, right? Well, we got those bolts off, put them in our bag labeled oil pump, so we'll know what those bolts go to. Now I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, there we go. I'm going to undo this now. Of course, there's also the drive shaft for the oil pump. Okay, here's, here's my thing about those aftermarket drive shafts for Mel Motors is uh i think i'm gonna i'll show you this the input diameter of the shaft where it narrows down is going to be the same even if you buy a thicker shaft where's the failure point going to be if you look them up you'll see what i mean and i'll show you the shaft when i pull it out so we'll do that and uh for the curious this is your oil pump drive shaft. I can see why people say these fail. It is kind of thin and it's really long and hexagonally shaped, which may not be the best. So just, you know, for reference, that's what I'm talking about. Well, now I can start loosening all these rod caps in preparation for uh, everything to be taken out. I'm not going to completely disassemble it now because I still got to get the cam gear puller. Nate's got to bring that over. But uh, I'm going to at least start. And I guarantee some of these pistons in the rear are going to start moving. It's these ones up front. We might have to knock them out because then... We're gonna pull the uh, crank pulley off. We're gonna get these gears off. And then once we get all this out of the bottom, then we can go at the camshaft and those lifters. That's my plan. Because I think those lifters are kind of our big uh, hurdle here. Now, of course, everything on here is a one half inch. And these up here are retaining nuts. Got two sets of nuts on it. Of course, we could also take a quick peek at the condition of the bearings over here. These retainer nuts are factory. I'm going to keep them on. 
but, you know, I wonder. Here, the top will go. My reason that did not feel like a hundred foot pounds. The moment of truth. What do our bearings look like? Actually, pretty good. I don't know how well you could see that, but yeah, look at that. Pretty good. Like I said, I'm 90% certain this engine has been messed with before. So, oh, we have a confirmation there. What I'm doing is probably bad practice in making uh, actual engine rebuilders cringe, like, oh, you're doing it in the wrong order, but uh, some uh, issues we're having kind of necessitate doing it, doing it this way, but. Yeah, not bad. Pretty good, all right, now we're gonna make sure we don't lose this cap and our nuts, so we're gonna put them back on. unfortunately rotating the engine so we can get some of those is going to be a little bit of an issue but you know So I think that's where I'm going to end this video for today, the teardown part one. So we're definitely going to have a part two. And can I just say, what a high note to end on. Bearings in good shape. Engine still doesn't turn, but it looks like we have a plan. We can work with that. So we'll see y'all later.